with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Some Pharisees came to Jesus and to test him, they asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause? Jesus answered, have you not read that the one who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. They said to him, why then did, you, did Moses command us to give a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her? Jesus said to them, it was because you were so hard-hearted that Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for unchastity and marries another commits adultery. And his disciples said to him, if such is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. Jesus said to them, not everyone can accept this teaching, but only those to whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who have been so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made so by others. And there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Let, any, let anyone accept this who can. The Gospel of the Lord. The Bible has many different things to say about marriage. The prophet Ezekiel today uses marriage to illustrate the tenderness of God toward the people of Israel. But married love that people feel toward one another is like the tenderness God felt toward Israel. And the anger that God felt was like the anger of someone whose love has been betrayed. But finally, in the end, tenderness triumphed over anger. And God accepted his people again. St. Paul takes this image and says that marriage is the image of Christ in the church. And the Second Vatican Council quotes St. Paul and understands him to mean it is the mutual love of husband and wife that is the image of the love of Christ for the church. Genesis traced the origin of marriage to that most fundamental of human needs, not to be alone. And our Lord quotes that today in the reading. He says, God made them so that they would be one flesh. And what God has made one, let no one separate. And he goes on to say, to condemn remarriage after divorce. But then the conversation takes an unexpected turn. For his disciples say, if that's the case, it's better not to get married. Our Lord doesn't agree with them, but he does say that there are some people who choose to remain unmarried for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. And then he issues a challenge. Let those who can accept this, accept it. St. Paul accepted it himself. And let a single life in pursuit of the kingdom of heaven. And he writes in 1 Corinthians that it has helped him to concentrate on pleasing the Lord, and it would help others who chose the same sort of life, it would help them to concentrate on pleasing the Lord. But marriage remains the basic building block of the church, of society, and of the kingdom of God. In fact, marriage is meant to be the kingdom of God in miniature. 
the family, the home, is meant to be where God is present and where goodness rules. But our Lord's words to his disciples that day had a freeing effect. It made them realize that was not the only possibility. There was another way to live, to be pleasing to God and to serve the kingdom, to choose to lead a chaste single life. To know those words, so few as they are in the Gospels, they would never, we could never predict. So many people, men and women over the centuries, would choose to follow that way, would take up our Lord's challenge, would devote their lives to helping other people, to caring for the sick, for teaching, to teaching, to meeting people's needs in whatever way they could. Could have never predicted that the Roman church, the church in the Roman rite, would choose that way for all its priests. But those words were freeing because it allowed people to think there are two ways in which we can serve the kingdom of God, two ways pleasing to God. You know that there are failures in marriage and there are failures among people who try to lead, chase single life. But the possibility of failure has never kept people from getting married, nor has it kept people from choosing to lead a single life, nor should it. Because each, in its own way, the married people and the people who lead the chaste single life are bearing their special witness to the presence of the good God on this earth. And they're making come true what our Lord said that day when he first talked to the people, the kingdom of God is at hand. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Let us take a moment now to mention those intentions for which we wish to pray at this Eucharist. Let us pray for the church throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all the peoples of the earth, for peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for this community here and in television. Let us pray for all those who have asked us for their prayers over the, as they have written us, asking us to pray for their special intentions. For all of them, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Most merciful and generous God, hear these prayers and answer them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sin. My brothers and sisters, please pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, bring us closer to salvation through these gifts which we bring in your honor. Accept the perfect sacrifice you have given us. Bless it as you bless the gifts of Abel. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. 